Thanks for tuning in to the second quarter update of the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF, symbol D-I-V-O. I'm speaking with Portfolio Manager Kevin Simpson. Kevin, let's start at a high level. Could you please remind viewers, what is the investment thesis behind Devo? Sure thing, Jay, and thanks for having me. You know, Devo is really about core, high-quality, blue-chip equity income. We're going to invest in 25 to 30 best-of-breed blue-chip stocks, all of whom are selected for dividends and dividend growth. We allocate across all sectors, so there's no market timing, there's no sector bets, even to the extent that we may have a strong conviction on any one name. We don't allocate more than 5% to any singular position. Everything about the portfolio is risk-adjusted total return. We're looking for 2 to 3% cumulative dividend and a 10 to 15% dividend growth, really from a recency effect. So we're looking over five years, and we want the portfolio to be increasing dividends because the companies that we own are increasing the earnings. And Jay, that's typically a recipe for success. If you've got a company that's increasing earnings, even in light of everything that's happening around the world and from this economic perspective, stock prices can still go higher. The second thing we do with Devo from an income perspective is we'll sprinkle in some covered call writing where we'll write short-term, out-of-the-money covered calls on a handful of names. We do this to harvest volatility and to reduce a little bit of the downside capture. So, Kevin, when you look at the second quarter, specifically around sectors, what changes did you see in the portfolio? Well, the second quarter was a hard quarter across the board, Jay. It was almost like they threw the baby out with the bathwater in the second quarter. We were able to make some tactical changes to the portfolio Probably the highlight was trimming and reducing some of the exposure we had to energy. Uh, Marathon Petroleum, as a specific example, was a company that we reduced the position by half. It had been up 500% since its pandemic lows, and that allowed us to take a profit in energy, which had just been such a great performer, Chevron, Marathon Petroleum. And then in June, there was a big turnover. The energy names really sold off. They came down a lot. So I think our timing was good there. It gave us assets to put to work elsewhere. Um, we've been sprinkling it throughout the portfolio and some other names that are down and out of favor. We added General Mills to the portfolio, which uh, recently reported good earnings, revenue, both top and bottom line. Cheerios, I mean, who doesn't love them? Uh, good old fashioned fortress balance sheet, strong dividend, and a stock that you know fits our name pretty nicely. So, Kevin, you've become a regular contributor on CNBC, which is great for folks who hold the Devo ETF because they can get your opinion on current names in the portfolio. For today, what are some of the holdings in the Devo ETF that you are paying the closest attention to? Well, we like to think that we pay attention to all of them, but some of the ones that we're, we're paying a little extra attention to are really in the technology space. Uh, we have a position in Apple that we've had off and on for the past 10 years. And we're wondering now at this point, if that becomes more of a consumer stock and less of a technology stock. And if so, you know, how do you value it? Where do you put a multiple there? The nice thing about the pullback, the broad correction that we've seen is that it's given us multiple compression across the board for a lot of names that we own. But Apple's a position that's probably one of the most talked about, if not the most talked about stock on the street. And we're starting to wonder if at this point it's still a growth stock. Is it a consumer staple stock? Walmart came out with earnings. Uh, I'm not sure when this will be broadcast, but Walmart came out with very poor uh, quarterly earnings for the second time in a row. The stock really sold off. It's showing that the consumer is suffering at the fate of high interest rates, high inflation. And if we're struggling as a society to pay for consumer goods at Walmart, you got to start to wonder how many of us will be able to pony up $1,000 for a new iPhone every year. We're also looking at the strong dollar affecting them as many, many international companies and the shutdown in China, as far as the supply chain concern, put a lot of uh, risk on Apple that quite frankly, we haven't talked about in a number of years. So Kevin, when you look at the Devo ETF, where should advisors think about placing this in an overall model allocation today? You know, very clearly Devo is a core holding. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of growth, but mostly value names in there. Equity income, if you think about inflation as something that's not going away anytime soon, 
And even if it abates the retiree, the baby boomer, the person in retirement is going to be faced with inflation for a long period of time, hopefully in a long and healthy retirement. And a company that gives you a raise every year, companies that have dividend increases, that, that dividend increase is a true inflation hedge. So I look at it as a core holding that you build around. Yes, you still need some growth. You still need some fixed income, international for sure. Uh, but Devo should be a core holding, not a satellite, not some weird alt because it has covered calls in there. Kevin, we're recording this at the midpoint of 2022. What are your thoughts as it relates to the markets and the economy looking out over the rest of the year? Well, I'm not as optimistic about the second half of the year as a lot of strategists are. You come off the first half of the year with a return as bad as we've seen in the stock market since 1970. Historically, when you have poor numbers in the first half, you get a nice rebound in the second half. I don't think we should just depend on history repeating itself this time. I feel like there's just too many headwinds as the Fed tries to navigate a soft landing, which quite frankly, I don't think is possible. As we try to sidestep and avoid a recession, which I also don't think is possible, if we're not already in a recession, I think we'll be in one uh, before the end of the year. And that gives some hope for next year for sure. But it just makes the second half of the year look a little cagey. Some of the things I often look at as contrarian indicators uh, are, are, are running hot. But I think maybe the retail investor has it right for a change. You know, we're looking at retail sentiment from an investment perspective. It may be the sixth most bearish it's been since 1987 when we started to, to track some of that data. There is um, a Bank of America study that looks at funds. And there's a fund survey, again, for retail investors. Stock allocations are at the lowest level since 2008. Cash allocations at the highest level since 2001. That, that to me, is a, um, a, an indication that we're probably a lot closer to the bottom than we are to a top. I think it's going to be a, a bottoming process that we go through through the second half of the year. So even if we're not incredibly enthusiastic about the second half, there are amazing opportunities, especially in the space, this blue chip, high quality world that we invest in. Now's the time to be dollar cost averaging into Devo, looking again at three, five year time horizon. Um, when you see market pull, markets pull back like this, there are opportunities that you want to take advantage of. And we're excited about the future if we're not exceptionally excited about the very short term future. Kevin, thanks for coming on again this quarter to share your thoughts on Devo. To learn more about the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF, symbol DIVO, please visit DIVOETF.com. That's DIVOETF.com. 